Good evening and welcome to Crossroads. Well, as we've been discussing pretty frequently on this show, information is the lifeblood of a free society. The marketplace of ideas is meant to be the stage of debate between the people who really call the shots in a constitutional republic like ours, between the voters who decide who leads the nation and also which policies represent them in the seats of power. But what happens if these forums for public debate get censored? What happens when key topics become off limits? When certain political narratives can no longer be challenged or discussed openly? If information is restricted, then what information informs the voters when they choose their representatives? And most importantly, who is left in control of the flow of information and which side of the political system do their interests serve? These are crucial questions for the United States that the country needs to be facing right now. The questions that are coming to the forefront as we learn about the so-called weaponization of government are really around this. Now on the information front, we saw, for example, from the Twitter files, how the FBI was using its connections with Twitter and Facebook to help crush legitimate information on COVID-19, crucial to people's health, and even on political topics like Hunter Biden's laptop that could have altered the outcome of an election. But has anything really changed? Or are the risks to public information actually becoming a lot bigger than they were even before? Well, this is where the Pentagon is now coming into focus. The Intercept revealed something interesting. A document from February 23rd, or sorry, 2023, released by the U.S. Special Operations Command, and it detailed how the elite warfighters of the United States are looking into new tools for psychological warfare operations. In particular, it seems they want to use deep fake videos for military operations. Now, deep fakes are a type of fake, but very realistic looking video where people's faces can be superimposed on others. They can make public figures appear to say things they never said. They can be used to frame people for crimes or for scandals that they had no part in. And which types of tools the Pentagon has at its arsenals for this, this, you know, things to counter disinformation or to create disinformation of its own, really, we still don't really know. We do know, however, that they have military units dedicated to psychological warfare operations. Look, last year, in fact, there was a military recruitment video that was turning some heads, mainly because it was so weird. It was from the U.S. Army's 4th Psychological Operations Group under Special Operations Command. They're described by Special Operations Command with this. PSYOP forces are masters of influence, the core of information warfare. We conduct influence activities to target psychological vulnerabilities and create or intensify fissures, confusion, and doubt in adversary organizations. We use all available means of dissemination, from sensitive to high and high-tech to low-tech to no-tech, and methods from overt to clandestine, to deception. This was the video they released last year. Let me show you. There is another very important phase of warfare. It has as its target, not the body, but the mind of the enemy. The target of psychological warfare is against the enemy's mind. It is words and ideas. The ammunition used by Cywar. Its mission is to influence the thoughts of the enemy soldier. And at the same time, is expected and encouraged to study foreign languages and the social sciences such as history, economics, and sociology. He must have a broad and sympathetic understanding of all phases of human experience. Now look, it should be clear that war is no longer what it used to be. We're no longer in this age like of, you know, conventional guns and bombs and tanks. We're in an age now of total war whole of nation warfare, unrestricted warfare, the short of war operations that push conflicts to the very boundaries of what would elicit conventional military response, but never cross that line. Some call it fifth generation warfare. 
It's the new way of fighting that bypasses the guns and tanks and bombs and goes straight to the hearts and minds of a target population. America's adversaries are also involved in this domain. The Chinese Communist Party, for example, they have an entire military system adopted into their military code dedicated to this. They call it the three warfares, and that includes media warfare to control outlets of information, legal warfare to manipulate international law as a weapon of war, and psychological warfare to control how people perceive information. In the United States, our military is likewise responding to this and similar operations from other nations. And the systems mobilized in this war are not limited to the Pentagon. It's a whole of society operation that includes government branches like the FBI, the State Department, and many, many others. And while it's debatably necessary, there are some valid concerns over you know, what, what it means for the government to have legal authority to manipulate information and public perception. The State Department actually wrote in June of 2023 about its shared responsibility to fight disinformation. And it claimed this, it said, Russia has operationalized the concept of perpetual adversarial competition in the information environment by encouraging the development of a disinformation and propaganda ecosystem. And it claims that this ecosystem flows into nearly every topic, that it includes everything from human rights to environmental policy to assassinations and civilian killing, bombing campaigns are fair targets in Russia's malign playbook. So does the State Department, or even the Pentagon for that matter, then have the authority to counter alleged Russian narratives in nearly every single topic? While the State Department page quotes President Joe Biden from his inaugural address, noting that this responsibility is not even limited to just the government, it's everyone. Let me show you what Biden said back then. And each of us has a duty and a responsibility as citizens, as Americans, and especially as leaders, leaders who have pledged to honor our Constitution and protect our nation, to defend the truth and defeat the lies. This raises a deeper question. If branches of our own government are given the power to regulate truth and lies like Biden suggested, what happens if a group of individuals creates false information and then weaponizes the system created for that to instead crush truth. And if these programs are about fighting foreign threats of disinformation, can a faction falsely create evidence to claim there's a foreign threat and then mobilize all these powers for their own gain? We saw this happen in the United States. We saw this.